Listen, listen, first of all, yes. soccer, football, we call it in Europe. We call it soccer, get used to it. So, <laughs> so we call it football. We are a football channel, or a soccer channel. Well, we are quite an international bunch, where Englishman Tom calls it... Football. Dave from the US says... Soccer. Scottish colleague Mark calls it... Football. And Dania tells us what it's called in her homeland, Canada. Soccer. But a lot of our viewers tell us we shouldn't be so careless with our choice of words. Most comments on our channel suggest we should call it football and nothing else. The term soccer makes them flinch and that's one of the less offensive comments. Others say soccer is totally acceptable. There is a war of words going on in our comments. Why? And not only there. What you see here is Manchester City striker Sergio Aguero's reaction to former footballer Akba Bajabiamila using the word soccer. We get that in soccer sometimes, don't we? We get ties. It's football, not soccer. Oh, excuse me. People hate the word soccer. Type the phrase, it's football, not soccer, into Google search, and you can't deny it. These two words cause battles. They are the most controversial words on social media. People get very angry at you. And not just a little bit angry, very, very angry. They will shout at you and they will scream. And for fuck's sake, stop saying soccer. Stefan Szymanski and Silke Maria Weinig have written a book about it. It's also as a linguistic phenomenon. This is, we believe, unique. There has never been a word that we can find that has been exiled from a language. The war on the word soccer can be found on merchandise products, fashion items, and even in our office. Just the disrespect yes. that you receive as soon as you say the word soccer, you instantly don't know anything about it, you shouldn't be speaking about it, yes. you are crazy, you have no idea what's going on. Like you say, even though you've played for like such a long time. And yeah. I, ca I can't think of like any example where it's got me into trouble or anything like that. But um, I'd ha I have cousins from Florida and talk about soccer and I, I, just, I just remember thinking like, are you, you can't be related to me. <laughs> this is horrible. They're distant cousins. <laughs> yeah, I used to hate it when I was growing up. The anger here is almost exclusively addressed at Americans. Listen to English comedian John Cleese. Why do the Americans insist on calling it soccer? Why do they have such a problem calling it football? Football and soccer, or vice versa. Uh. It's a bit like autumn and fall, two words that describe the same thing. So why all this anger and frustration caused by these harmless words? Why not accept? It's like cookies and biscuits, jumper and sweater, wellies and rubber boots. It's football, not soccer. Right, Sergio. But there are many versions of football. Rugby, Gaelic, Australian rules, football and football. Also known to the rest of the world as gridiron. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? American football. So the US and others like Canada, Ireland, South Africa, Japan and all these other parts of the globe marked green on this map stuck to the term soccer. So even for those who hate to say soccer or football, there are good reasons to use both terms. Firstly, to let someone know what sport you're talking about, like in Ireland. If an Irish person was talking to me and they said they played football, I'd probably ask if they meant soccer or Gaelic, depending on the context. But I mean, I wouldn't, if I was just talking about it generally, I would say football. I mean, I wouldn't. But if I was, yeah, if I was talking about sport and differentiating, then I would use the word soccer and I wouldn't want to punch myself in the face, <laughs> which I used to. <laughs> What's even funnier, see the flag? Let's change it into the nation's flag where the word soccer was invented. As best we know, the word soccer was coined at Oxford University. British elite schoolboys love that game, but their competitive desires required regulations. In 1863, rules were defined and the Football Association was formed. But there were still other versions of the game. That's why a new rulebook was written, one that allowed the use of hands. It's known as rugby football. 
This distinction between rugby football and association football marks the origin of soccer. Like rugger is a shorter version of rugby football, soccer became a snappier version of association football. This can be read in a tiny letter from 1905 published in the New York Times. As a matter of fact, it was a fad at Oxford and Cambridge to use ER at the end of many words. And as association did not take an ER easily, it was and is sometimes spoken of as soccer. Another surprising fact can be found by reading papers from those days. We know from uh, American and Australian newspaper sources, people in Australia and the United States were saying, don't call it soccer, that's an Oxford word, the proper name is football. Confused? Get me a map. It was the soccer version, the one played with the feet, that soon spread from England to everywhere. Almost everywhere. Except the United States. Here the other sport, the one with the hands, rugby, exploded. Everyone loved that game that developed into the most popular sport in the US and something very un-British. America, the action is deliberately kept short so that the sponsors can get in as many commercials as possible. The world couldn't accept that the world's great supernation didn't love the world's game. And on top of that, changed its name. It's a pastime for people to point out how wrong Americans are. The aim of these graphics is to convince Americans. If you don't like our sport, at least name it right. As if they cared. So it's completely absurd to tell Americans not to use a word that you yourself have used in the past uh, and which you invented anyway. Um, so that's absurd as well. But also it's slightly absurd is the, um, the asymmetry in, this, in the intensity of this debate, because for British people and Europeans, this can be a source of intense anger and antagonism. For Americans, it's a shrug of the shoulder. They don't care. It's even worse now that the USA has become a global force in football. The fan community is growing. The men take part in World Cups. And the women even win them. The fact that North Americans are like encroaching on territory that is considered European. And that's kind of like, oh, but it's our sport. You can't call it, you want to come in and you want to call it soccer and you want to be good at it too. We weren't that good at football for a long time and now it's starting to change. There's a lot of Americans in the Bundesliga and it's kind of like, yeah. what happens if we lose against them? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah, I think, I think you're right. I think it's not just the word it's bound up with. It's definitely, I think we have a chip on our shoulders a bit in Europe about like cultural imperialism, let's say. <laughs> 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 from coming from the States, which is ironic because we consume so much culture. The yeah. States specifically, I think this idea that they're not quite getting it. These people don't quite get the game. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Listen to how they talk, they don't even yeah. use the right words. USA! USA! So today, the American way of life has become so dominant that for some Europeans, the argument about football or soccer is now the last remaining battlefield to defend their culture. This is a form of, of, of cultural jealousy and anti-Americanism to say you, you alone are not allowed to use this word and you must use the word that everybody or that almost everybody else uses. And of course, what's strange is that because this is the one aspect of global culture which the Americans have not dominated. If you think about music, movies and uh, all ma most forms of culture have in globalization being dominated by Americans and American businesses. And soccer, football, is really the one global activity which is not predominantly American. So what's the solution? Will this debate ever end? You can't solve it, can you? Or maybe you put out widespread information that the word is English. <laughs> the word came from England. 
What does the academic think? We don't necessarily need to find a solution. We just need to learn to, to laugh about it. Then we can put the spotlight on another question. Why do Americans call this a field? It's a pitch, isn't it? No, God! No, God!